Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Satish Gupta, and I come from Tata Powered Solar. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I'm uh, the CFO there, and uh, I would like to voice over what Rishi said that. Uh, as far as uh, we from the finance fraternity is concerned, we are really concerned about our money. And uh, when we borrow, yes, we are also equally bothered about how the, the uh, funding fraternity would view it. Yes, there are surely issues which are, which are moving around these days in terms of uh, government, especially honoring their PPAs. But I'm pretty sure that it is a, it is a temporary feature. I mean, otherwise this industry will surely die down. And uh, so to that extent, though I agree and still disagree with him. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, on rooftop there are in fact, not only the PPA challenges, but I think there are still much more challenges because there you are putting up the establishment onto somebody else's roof where you may, you may not have an excess. It is not like automobile uh, uh, funding where, okay, the, the lender can take possession of the, of the car and uh, then still recover some more money. But here, I mean, uh, the, the owner of that premises may not allow you even inside. So those are surely some more challenges associated with it. Anyway, so here I'm uh, trying to really challenge the Though we have, we did not have much discussion on the technology here, and we are largely trying to voice over on the EPC of large projects and uh, rooftops. Uh, but I think the more technology is into manufacturing, it can be into solar cells, PV modules, uh, upward, downward, downstreams. Um, we had presentation on uh, on various components, say uh, trackers, for example, or presentations on uh, uh, on the inverters. Uh, but I think still module plays a major role. And in India, uh, with made in India thirst that we have, I think uh, government is also trying to push a lot on made in India cells and modules. Historically, yes, there had been a protection in the DCR, but then that, uh, that went off uh, when we were challenged into WTO. Uh, still, what I hear is that, yes, government is still trying to protect the Indian industry uh, by one way or the other, and latest being the ADD and, uh, and maybe safeguard duties. Uh, but coming back onto the technology, if we really do not want any protection, right, but still, if we want to be independent, I think there are still a lot of challenges that we all are facing or are due to be faced. Uh, I think most of us would have seen all these slides, but I still want to voice over. I think uh, the global market is about 100 gigawatt, maybe by, though here it is 2020, uh, but maybe by 19 or 18 even, uh, we can really see that the installations would be to the extent of 100 gigawatt. So there's a huge market. Uh, this is, uh, there was a small company, uh, Solexent, who predicted uh, that in about 2008, when uh, I think a lot of solar companies really made money, the reason was that the ASPs were very high, the volumes were low. But on the other hand, if you really want to make, uh, I mean, expand and want to grow into solar, the rates have to come down. So what happened by 2010, I think a lot of uh, Chinese uh, companies really expanded and so did others. And uh, in India also, there were companies like Moser Bear or Indosolar and a couple of other uh, companies which really went into uh, uh, making uh, uh, solar cells and modules. Uh, probably the next slide, oh, it doesn't, yeah. So if you really see the first four blocks, so there the capacity is, the green line is the capacity and the red is the, the pickup or, or how the installations were happening. So there if we see there was a huge gap, almost 50% was the demand whereas the capacities were 2x. So with the result, there was a lot many companies who really 
either got bankrupt during uh, 1213, by the time 1213, or they were taken over, or I mean, they just died down. And uh, if you see, uh, I mean, uh, I have put up some uh, uh, data there. In 2012, if you see the number of companies, they were either gone bankrupt or closed down their shutters or were acquired, the list is huge, right? Uh, during those days, we also used to hear about concentrated technology. It was again a technology. But that was more fueled by that uh, the PV was, uh, was at a very high price and they thought that they can add values. But uh, with, the, with the scale going up, with China coming in, I think uh, today we don't, I, I don't think how many people of us would have really be hearing on the, on the, on the concentrated technology. So it is totally washed out, right? Uh, even uh, thermal for that matter, it was a big push till 2011 that yes, we should have solar thermal. No one is uh, really talking about it. So that technology is also came and just died down, right? So we really need to have our hands on that. Though we all want to have good technology, good, uh, 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 good returns on our investments, but as manufacturer, are we really there? Is the new technology helping us? And this I'm talking more particularly from the Indian perspective, not from the global perspective. <clears throat> so uh, this is more, uh, more a gyan that there are largely three types of, uh, uh, of technologies now, if I ex exclude the thermal and, uh, and the concentrated technology or in fact two. Uh, so one is thin film and other is the PV cell that we all talk about. And in PV also probably uh, uh, there, there are two. One is uh, the crystalline and other is mono. So I think in today's world, I'll say almost 90, 95% is, is controlled by, uh, by the silicon uh, PV. Uh, the right hand side uh, graph shows that if uh, what does the efficiency do so if efficiency is increasing there is a there is a downward uh, uh, pricing uh, i can't really read from here but maybe you can just uh, see what uh, what would it do so uh, this also gives us uh, or raises question Am I investing in the right technology? Is my payback time and technology is just two years? Because what we see is every two years, three years, I mean, uh, we, we, we see that, okay, uh, a new technology has come. There is an improvement of about 2% uh, uh, into the efficiency. So now a, a plant which I had put in uh, two years back at say 16% is obsolete now. What do I do? So am I able to, able to get my money back with the profits in just two years time, right? I think we need to, to really see what technology means to India, what technology means to us, and what are we doing? These days what I observe is we largely try to work on variable cost, okay, I mean, any investment what we have done, we, we think that it's a sunk cost. And we are in fact forced to do that, we as finance people, because then I think, oh, this is something which I have already burnt, right? So let me see what all I can recover. But would it really give me confidence in, my, in me in really investing into future technology? Right, probably no. So this is again uh, uh, another sheet which, uh, which echoes what I'm trying to say. Today we are uh, a standard uh, um, cell that I make. Then I have perk, then I have uh, uh, multi-contact, then uh, hit and back contact, hit and whatnot, whatnot. So today most of them may be into lab or maybe slightly into commercial, right? But by the time I really think that there is a value, probably the next technology is already knocking your door. 
right? Then similarly, there are, uh, I mean, uh, a, a lot of technology or there is a change into the wafer also. P-type, N-type, black wafer, white wafer, I do not know. I am a finance guy, I do not know what colors all uh, <laughs> it really has, right? Where should I point it? Okay. So uh, this also this slide also shows this is the entire value chain of solar. So we generate uh, silicon, then we make uh, polysilicon, then we have wafering, then cell module, and then the application. Right. Today we largely talk about in India at least on cells and modules. Uh, systems is basically a, 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 a off-take, that's a market or, or where we use these. So, I mean, we are just trying to point out on, our, uh, on the cost front only about 12-13%, right? Whereas the meat is more into, into uh, polysilicon development and wafering. What are we doing on that? Then what all are the government supports? I mean, if we see US gives N number of, uh, of support, financial support, tax support, and you know, things like that to, to promote solar. Similarly, countries like Malaysia, Taiwan, China, they have a lot of incentives, even for the rooftop and, uh, and large project installation. In India, what, we, what did we do? Capital subsidy? Uh, Unfortunately, it is uh, the manufacturer who, or the EPC player who is to claim that money. Uh, in Hindi, they say that they don't get money from the government. Se paisa nahi nikalta hai, right? So that is really not playing much role. Then the, the, the companies which are already there into manufacturing, uh, many of them have died, right? DCR is not really of any help. Uh, government started, but WTO ruling, everything is washed out. So should I really expand? Should I trust government? Should I do what? So I mean, I'm not trying to really uh, uh, put questions on anyone or on the government or you know things like that, but as finance person, I think we really need to have questions and we should have, unless until good answers and convincing answers, I think uh, it would be then this, this slide shows that, uh, I mean, China has taken a great leap. So can they, you wrap up? They, they, they make all... press for time. Sorry? Little press for time, so... Okay, sure. Okay, China makes about 44% of uh, polysilicon, whereas they consume almost 83% of it. So that's the volume that uh, Chinese are in. Similarly, the other graphs also shows, so which means... I mean, China is something which is, uh, which is, uh, which is a, a factory for the entire globe. So should we be there as India? Can we really compete there? Uh, this again shows that, okay, uh, I mean, what government financing support is there? I mean, um, we as individual companies now probably cannot really invest into R&D and, you know, uh, other technologies and innovations, et cetera. Whereas, Chinese have acquired various company, various R&D and uh, innovation companies world over with the government help. So they are, I think, miles and miles ahead of us on that matter. So should we be really there in manufacturing all these? Now, even uh, when we say China, so these are, this is a graph of all the, or most of the tier one Chinese company. Here you will see, except for Canadian Solar and Jinko, who are making very marginal 1 to 3% profits, the rest of the companies are into losses. So they all are large player, big players, having multiple gigawatt capacities, right? Having latest technology, they all offer you 18 plus or maybe to the extent of 19% efficiencies. I mean, they have all the right parameters, all the right support, and still they are into heavy losses. So should I really invest into technology and manufacturing? Uh, these are again uh, uh, macro constraints. So where is my policy? 80% of uh, 
uh, of the items are uh, imported, so which means I have a foreign uh, currency risk as EPC player also, right? Then uh, growing preference towards green energy means again there would be a, a price uh, cut because market can only grow when there is a reduced uh, uh, reduced um, uh, selling prices. Then uh, rapid evolution of cell and module technology will lead to obsolescence. So, I mean, as I was saying today, if I buy any technology, two years later, it is more or less obsolete, right? So I need to provide uh, budgets and, you know, things like that. So these are, uh, I think, in summary, what all questions uh, that I had been asking on each slide, I think that's the food for thought. So that's something uh, which I had. So are we looking for the best of our investments? I think that's something that I would like everyone to think about. Thank you. <laughs>